The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, Neil Matthews here. Uh, can I first just go through a couple of housekeeping things? Could you let me know if you can hear me okay? If you could just type into the text chat box that comes with GoToWebinar, let me know if you can hear me okay. Yes, sounds like you can hear me okay. That's great. And can you also confirm that you can see my desktop? There should be a grey slide saying building multi-language websites. Brilliant. Everyone seems to be able to see in here. Let me just close a couple of things down and we'll start today's session. So, good morning. Good afternoon or good evening to you, depending upon your time zone. Uh, it's Neil Matthews here from WPDude.com and my new site, WebPolyglot.com. And in today's session, we're going to look at building multi-language websites. I'm recording this session, so if you miss any of the points, I'll send you a copy of the video tomorrow, once that's all done. And there's also the text chat box that I'll leave open throughout this session. So if you have any questions, Please just type them into the text chat box and I'll answer them as I go. There will also be a lot of time at the end of the session in a Q&A part of the webinar where I'll answer any queries that you have. Okay, let's look at the agenda for this session. We're going to look at why, why you should have a multi-language site. What's the benefits of investing time and effort into building a site that hosts multiple language? I'm going to take you through the tools I use to build multiple language sites for my clients. And I'm going to address the problem, what if you don't speak or, more importantly, don't write language X or Y? How can you support and give your people, your website visitors, the content they want? There are tools and there are professional service companies out there which will help you to build foreign language websites. After those couple of slides, I'll go into a demo of building a multi-language site. We're going to add uh, just a single additional language to a site. We're going to, we've got an English site and we're going to add French to it. We're going to add some translated content. And then I'm going to add a language selector so our site visitors can see which language they want to read their content in. And then I'll, I'll look at some of the specific areas of the site where we can also translate. After the demo, I'll go into the challenges of a multi-language site. The demo, I'll let you know now, the demo I'm going to give you is pretty basic. And I'm going to make a very simple site. So there are some challenges of building a multi-language site. And I'll take you through those in that slide. And that will end the formal part of the presentation. And I'll open the floor to a question and answer session. Estimated time for this webinar. 60 minutes, that's very generous. It's probably going to be less than that, but I've added ample time for you to ask your questions at the end. So why should I have a multi-language site? It's commonly known that English is the lingua franca of business. If you do business outside of your own country, chances are you'll be able to read and write in English. It's a terrible generalization, I know, but it's generally accepted that English is used for multi-language business. The problem is, if you're coming at it from that point of view, the person reading your content or dealing with your website is often visiting your site with English as a second language. And this can uh, cause confusion, lack of understanding, and generally not help you to get your message off correct message over correctly if all you're using is English. If you extend and provide multiple languages to your people or your site visitors and help them to understand what you're trying to convey in their native language, the chance that your message is going to get over is far increased. There's an argument that there's a service from Google Translate where you can put a widget onto your site and Google will automatically translate that content for you. 
The problem with that is automatic translation is not very good. I've learned that to my own con uh, costs recently. <coughs> Excuse me. I use Google Translate to add a German and Spanish and French version of my new site just as a very quick temporary stopgap and immediately I was getting complaints from especially German reading people. The content that Google had translated for me was very, very poor. So don't rely on automatic translations from Google. The, the quality and the content they produce just isn't up to par. Next reason why you should have a multi-language site, the nuance of a language often doesn't translate very well. So something that might be very common parlance in English, if you translate that directory into French using a tool, it might not mean anything to that French reading person. So having somebody who understands both the languages and can provide a professional translation will help to get you, convey your message far more effectively. So when you've got a multi-language site, what can you do? Well, obviously, you can get into new markets. So if you're in the US and you're trying to branch out into China, for example, having a Chinese language site or a Chinese version of your site will help to sell your products into that market. Helps you to build relationships much more easily. If complex, <coughs> excuse me, if complex, um, what am I trying to say here? If complex concepts are translated into that person's native language and they can understand it more easily, it helps to build that relationship. There might be a legal compliance. I know in the UK on government sites, we have to host everything in English and in Welsh. That's a legal requirement. Um, perhaps in your local territory, there might be similar legal requirements. If there are, please type them into the text chat box. I'd love to know if there's certain countries that you need to host multiple languages. If you need to branch into multiple territories, that's another area where you can have a multi-language site. You don't necessarily have, need to have multiple languages. You can have multiple versions of the same language for different territories. What do I mean by that? So, for example, you are selling into the US, UK, Australia, New Zealand, for example. You could have four versions of English language. And using the tools I'm going to show you today, you could then have a multiple territory showing different versions of the same English content or different English content to different territories. <coughs> Please excuse me, I've got a bit of a, come down with a bit of a cold today, so I'm coughing through this webinar, it's not very professional. And lastly, if you've got multinational staff and you need to supply content to them, the list goes on. What I'd like to do now is just open up a quick poll if I can, to get a feel for the types of languages you're trying to support on your website. Let me just launch this poll. If you could click all the languages you want to support on your site. <coughs> I've gone for I'm a bit limited to the number of uh, poll options I can supply to you so I've put other so if you go, if you typed other, please type in the text chat box some of the other languages you're trying to support. I'll keep it open for a few more seconds. Let me just close that pull down. Yeah, some some of the other languages that are coming over are Chinese, Dutch, Portuguese, Portuguese, Russian, and Chinese. I'll talk a little bit about the challenges of things like Russian and Chinese in a, a little while. But uh, let's have a look at the poll. It's roughly uh, a fairly even spread between Spanish, French, German that people are trying to support. Thanks for your results there. Let me just get back to the presentation. So what tools do I use to build multi multilingual sites? At the root of everything, I always use WordPress. WordPress is sort of a, as a blogging tool to help you develop uh, blog type sites. But in fact, WordPress is a really excellent content management system. It can build far more than just blogs. It can build fully functional websites. Uh, 
it can do e-commerce, it can do a whole host of other things. So don't be caught up on WordPress just as a blogging tool. It's a really excellent content management system. So using the tools available in WordPress, I create content. And then on top of that, I add a plugin called WPML. WPML, I'll talk about in depth in a little bit. But if you go to, whoops, if you go to WPML, the web poly, I'm just typing this in to, so you get the, the link. WPML web polyglot.com. You can go and view that plugin. And what that does is it sits on top of WordPress and it allows you to host multiple languages inside that. This is going to be the core of our demo, so don't get too hung up above that. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. I also use professional translation services from a company called I Can Localize. Um, my language skills aren't great. I know a little bit of French, a little bit of German. And after that, I peter out very, very quickly. So using their services, I can help my clients to translate in multiple languages. And again, I'll give you a demonstration of that when I get to it. I also use some other plugins and themes such as widget logic, media slides, and WooCommerce. That's a very interesting tool. That allows us to host multiple language, multiple currency web stores. So that's something of interest. If that's of interest, uh, drop me a, a line. I'll, I'll tell you more about that. And of course, I use translate.google.com for some very, very rough translation services. John's asking roughly what it costs to translate via I Can Localize. John, I'll go into that in depth a little later on. I'll show you how it works. But it starts at nine cents a word. I'll, I'll cover that in depth a little later on, though. Paul's saying he's just finished a WooCommerce store. Is it in one language, Paul? Or did you look at it in multiple languages and multiple currencies? Okay, let's talk a little bit about WPML. So it's a premium plugin. It sits on top of WordPress. And it costs £89, £89, $89 for the all singing, all dancing version. And what this does, it allows you to hold multiple languages on one site. It does that by not by creating multiple sites, which is often a technique people use. They'll create multiple copies of the same site. So you'll have one site, one backend, one management system, but it'll hold multiple copies of your content. So, for example, you might have an about page, and that would be holding three, vers uh, three languages, um, depending upon which language your client selects, that particular version of your content will be served up. So the things you can translate using WPML, posts, pages, menus, sidebar content, images, the list goes on and on. So anything you can put into a WordPress site can be translated using WPML. So what if you don't speak or write the language you need? I touched on this briefly before. The sites I build integrate with a professional translation service from a company called I Can Localize. So once you've built your content in the language you're comfortable with, you can approach them and get a quotation for a translation or for professional translation services. What it does is counts all the words and gives you a rough estimate based on uh, nine cents per word. So you can select which languages you want somebody to translate. So perhaps you might have somebody in-house in who can do French, but you need to outsource German. So you can select all your content, some of your content. You could select just particular pages, or you could exclude particular pages. It's very flexible, and you just push that out to I Can Localize, and it goes into a translator's queue. They translate it for, it, for you, and it's automatically pushed back into your site. Um, it's not published automatically, it's pushed in as a draft. You can then review it and publish it when you see fit. It also has a peer review service. 
So you can send it out to translator A, then translator B can then peer review it and make sure that it is in fact an accurate translation. Because <laughs> so obviously if you don't speak the language, you could push something out and it could come back and it could be absolute garbage. But that second sort of peer review makes sure it is uh, a valid and a good translation. It costs a little bit more for the peer review, obviously, because two people are reviewing the content. It starts at nine cents a word, but it will increase uh, based upon the scarcity of the language. Let me give you an example. I was doing um, a website that wanted English to Norwegian translation, and obviously there are fewer people who are available to do that type of translation work. So the cost went up to I think it was thirteen cents per word for that. Just going back to Paul, he was talking about using WooCommerce, he had his site in one language, but client ships internationally. So perhaps there's an opportunity to use WooCommerce with multiple languages there. So the remote clients could read the details about the e-commerce shop uh, in their local language. Let's talk about the demo. We're going to set up a very, very simple multiple language site. We're going to use my development site, dev.webpolyglot.com. We're going to add single language. In this case, we're going to use French. <laughs> I've got translate in uh, quotation marks there. We're going to translate some content. I'm not going to murder <laughs> the, uh, the French language with my very poor translation abilities. I'm just going to add uh, some tags under the end of the titles to show that it's the French content. We're going to add a language selector. Uh, we're going to set up a French menu. We're going to do some translations of plugins. We're going to do some translations of the sidebar content. And then we're also going to send some content or prepare some content for a professional translation. So if I go over to my development site now, and I'll give you a tour of that. Sometimes when I'm doing these demos, my internet connection slows down. So if it is slowing down and, you, and I'm, I'm going through the pages too quickly, please let me know in the text chat box. So let's go to my development site. And there it is there. So it's a very, very basic site. I'm just using um, four pages, home, about, blog, and contact. I've got some sample content in there. Not very impressive, but it will do for our very basic uh, demo. We've got a sidebar here, and of course we've got some blog posts just to show some content there. Let me just log in. And I'll take you through, first of all, adding a language. So here's the dashboard. If you haven't used WordPress before, um, sorry, <laughs> I don't really have enough time to take you through the, uh, the whole uh, increase of creating and developing a WordPress site. But one thing it says is a back-end dashboard for administration and a front-end which your site visitors will see. So this is a dashboard. And down here I have WPML. So I've already installed the plugin, and now I'm going to start adding some languages. So it's got a whole list of uh, languages, not just uh, traditional sort of European Latin languages, such as French, German, etc., Spanish, but it has things like um, Cyrillic languages support, such as Russian, it has Chinese, and as, as you can see, there's a whole host of other languages there. So I've selected French. Click on next. And that is French added to our site. We can go back at a future time and add other languages. So for example, if I decide, let me just finish this installation script.
So as I said, at future date, I can add remove languages. So say I want to use, I don't know, Dutch, for example. That was a language somebody mentioned that they want to use. We can just add it like that and click on apply. So once we've added our language, what we then get is uh, the ability to start managing multiple copies of our content. So I'll go to pages and have a look at the pages I've created inside of WordPress. You can see I've got those four, page, four pages previously mentioned, home, about, blog, contact. If I edit home, One moment, my machine's on a bit of a slowdown. There we go. Uh, so I've edited the home page, and over here we have some translation options. So what I'll do is I'll just create a duplicate of these in English. What that does is it copies over everything I've got in English into a, into a page for the French and the Dutch versions. And then if I go back to the page, we can see that underneath our flags, we can edit a French or a Dutch version of this. I said I was going to translate it, but I did put it in inverted comments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an FR on the end of all the content that is French. And I'll just very quickly do that for all the other pages. Please do let me know if I'm going too fast and the, the images aren't refreshing on your screen. Nearly there, one more page to do. Let's just edit the about page. Got a quick question from Catherine here. She says, Does blog type content work differently to static? page types. No, it doesn't. It's exactly the same. I'll show you in a few minutes. You jumped ahead of me a little bit there. <laughs> but it's, ex it's essentially the same process of holding multiple copies of either posts or pages. So now if we have a look at our pages that we've set up, we have Multiple, uh, we've got a copy of every page in French. What we need to do now is give the site visitor the way or the ability to select the content they want. So if I go back into WPML and into our language selector, our language section, I'm just going to remove Dutch to make this demo a little bit simpler. Sorry, my Dutch friends. It's nothing personal. I just want to make it as easy as possible to make this. Uh, demonstration work smoothly. What we then have is a language selector option. What we can do is we can add a language selector 
wherever we want really, we can add it in a sidebar, we can code it into our theme, if you know how to code up, we can use functions to display it wherever we want, uh, we can display it in the menu, uh, I'll just display it in the menu and in the sidebar. We can also show post translation links at the bottom of individual bits of content. So if we click yes on there, it'll, we'll have a little um, option that says this post or this page is also available in French. So that's useful if somebody gets to the bottom of your content, they've read it in English and they're not 100% sure, but then they get this option at the bottom that says you can have it in French if you wanted to. And we've also got something to show something in the footer. I've just selected everything so you can get a feel for, for what it looks like. Let me just apply that. And then show you what we've got. There we have it there. A little language selector. This can be styled and it can be made to look however you want. This is just the out of the box version, so it's pretty boring. Let me just show you some of the options we could use. We could show it as a list of languages like that, or we can add the flag. Let me just see if those options. See, it looks a little bit more interesting there. Obviously, you can change those images. You can put whatever flag images you want. Um, a good example of that is territorial type of language selectors. Um, you could have a US flag, a UK flag, an Australian flag, a New Zealand flag for different versions of English. So let's select French and see what happens. So you can see it's try to select what it can in French and display it. I'll see, and can the flags be customized? Yes, you can upload whatever images you like. Let me just show you that. So if I was to edit the language and let me just add a new test language. Using this upload flag option, and it should give me a there it is a little uploads what so you can upload whatever image you want to use. Just a couple of questions coming in now. Feel those. So Paul saying. So WPML only provides the options, not the tr translations of the content. That's correct, Paul. It's a system to hold your content. You need to either supply your own translations or get professional translation services in. I'll touch on that in a little while. And Rami saying, he's talking about right to left languages like Arabic. If it's okay, Rami, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. It's one of the challenges of having a multi-language site. So I've got some slides. I want to talk about that a little bit later on. I'll come back to that. So if you missed what I was talking about there, certain languages, I'm thinking Arabic, uh, Hebrew, they're read right to left, whereas Latin languages are left, left to right. And that provides its own set of unique challenges for design and building websites. I'll touch on those a little bit later on. So we've, let me just check my contents, we've added our we've added our language selector, let's make sure our language is 
all working okay. Let me edit the French version. I've just seen an issue there. Uh, let me just do that about page. I think I've deleted my content when I've removed Dutch. Okay, so now if I refresh my home page, because I've selected French, you can see that the page home page fr is served up and again about blog contact etc Catherine was talking about blog posts before again it's a very similar process i've got three blog posts there i'll only translate one and i'll show you why in a minute Let me just go back to the English version and open up my blog page. So if we scroll down, we can see that we've got three blog posts in English. One, two, three. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my French version. And what happens is we only get one blog post back. That's because we've only translated the post Oh, we've only translated a single post into French. So the system's clever enough to realize if the content hasn't been translated, not to display it. We can, there's some various options inside of WPML, so if the content isn't translated, to display it in the original language if you wanted to. But you can set it to only display content to people if it has already been translated. So that's quite a, a, a useful feature. Okay, let's look at another section. It's automatically translated the menus for me, but what if you want to have particular menus just for a, a certain language? Let's look at how you can do that. So the WordPress, this is done under appearance and then menus. So it's just displaying all the content at the minute, but if we set up a main menu, and this is an English main menu, and create that. And we put all the pages in. And save that menu. We can then create a French version of this menu. Let's call that main menu FR and as you can see it's brought back only my French content to add to a menu so what we could do perhaps is miss the contact page on French now if we go to or English version and then 
swap to our French version. Let me just check. I'll save my menu. This is all live, so sorry if there are any small glitches like this. I just needed to save that main menu option. And now if I go back to my main page, you can see it's dropped off the contact page. So this is just really a quick demonstration to show you can manage different menus for different languages in different manners. Okay. So we've looked at adding languages, we've looked at adding content, we've looked at setting a language selector, we've managed multiple menus for different languages, but there are also some other features. So if you don't know it, WordPress uses a theming system or a skinning system. So this is coded up, and this is the theme here, and it has inside of it various strings and bits of information. That we can't directly edit. So for example, this widget is displaying recent posts. How do we translate that? Well, inside of WPML, we have something called the string translation function. And what that does is it goes off and it checks things like plugins and your theme files and that kind of thing. And it pulls back a list of strings that are available for you to translate. So if we're going to do recent posts, for example, we do a string search for that and we, then we can add a translation like this mark that as translated and then save it and hopefully yeah it's picked up our string translation and it would display the appropriate language like that We can also, using the WordPress sidebar system, add particular bits of content for a particular language. So, for example, we could have a text box that was only French. And using this drop down here, we can set it only display to French like that. Now if I refresh my French part, we have this only French section, go back to English, and it makes a liar of me. <laughs> Let me just check what I've done there. Sorry, I needed to add an additional bit of code. As I said, this is all live. There's no safety net. So apologies if there's any little slips like this. So what I'm saying is, if the language code is equal to French, display it. And then when I refresh it, it's disappeared. So you can't control using those, that little bit of logic, what's displayed and to which language. So the final piece I want to show you in this demonstration is the, the professional translation services I talked about. So under WPML, we have a translation option. Sorry, let me go to the translation management section first. So here's our content. We can se select what we want to se send out. And we can have various translators. We haven't got any translators set up at the minute, but you could go out and you could add a translator. You could add Ask I Can Localize to give you a particular translator. And we also have this little quotation system. Let me just pick up a couple of questions. I'll say, this is powerful. It can be used outside languages, content of line of business. Yeah, it's 
when you get when you actually use it live, it, it's it blows you away. You just send something off into the ether, and you get translated content back. It's really excellent. So let's get a quick quote for this site. So it goes off. Uh, we want in, in French. No, sorry, we want English <laughs> to French. Let's select everything. And it'll produce a quote for me. So the cost to do the entire website would be $135. Obviously, it, that will vary depending upon the languages you select. So uh, a more rare language. Uh, as I mentioned, Norwegian cost me a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to uh, put some money into escrow with I can localize, and the word will begin. Things begin to come back to you, and they're added automatically into your site. So you can manage your translation jobs from this tab here, and it'll tell you when it's complete when the translation's done, that kind of thing. Paul's saying, how do you get quotes for the strings in the menu tab? It's this one here. Down at the bottom, you can select what type of content that you want to send out. And that'll appear on the home page. Down here. So there'll be a, a list of other things that can also be translated once you add them in. And that's the translation management in a nutshell, really. It's incredibly effective. Um, I'm trying to think when the last time I used it, if there was any snagging points. The, the billing system is a little bit complicated. You have to put a money into a scroll. The job begins, and you keep having to top that up until all the translations are done. Alternatively, you can deposit a large amount into your I can localize account, set the job away, and it's, it gets done. So that, that's the only uh, issue I've found with this professional translation service. You can pick your translators so if you have a bad results uh, with somebody you can get rid of them and select another person so there are many many people who will bid for your jobs um, uh, if it is a rare job if it's a rare language um, I can localize I'm trying to think which language it was it was I think it was German to Norwegian and they didn't have the appropriate translator, so they went out and found a translator for me. Uh, Nelly's saying, can you use other translation agencies easily? I can localize this built into the system, so it pushes out the content, but you can give another agency access to the system as um, just not an administrator, but as um, a, a a contrib contributor and they can go into your posts or your pages and they could go in and, and do the editing for you. Catherine's asking me, can I go over using your own translators? Yes, I can. So what you do is you create a new user in WordPress, add a new one. Let's call this trans later give it a password and then what you do is you give them a rule so rather than make them administrator you make them a an author or a contributor. That means they can create content, but not edit any any of the other back end functions of your site. So let's just log out. Okay. 
back in as translator. And there you have it. So we've got the blog posts. And then I could add a French version of that as a translator. Lauren one FR. Like that. You can also um, make it so they can't publish the content. You can make it so they can only write the content and then save it as a draft. And then you could come back in and uh, come back in and publish it at a later date when you're happy with that. Now he's saying, could you export the files to be translated? Yes, you could. Again, let me just log out and go back in as an administrator. Under settings, uh, under tools, there's an export option and you can select the content to be exported. It'll come out as an XML file. It's not the uh, nicest uh, format to work with, but it can be taken into a text file. Then the translators could work on it that way. Nelly, I'll do some research, see if there's a better way to export it for translation, and I'll drop you an email if that's all right. Let me just make a note of that. No, oh, you're saying the XML file, files are fine. Yep, so you can just export that XML file, send them over, the content can be written, and they can pass it back to you. Obviously, you can uh, copy that content in to WPML. That's the end of the demo. I'm just going to go back to the presentation and talk about a couple of other areas. So multi-language challenges. I've shown you a very basic website. That's what you must understand. So there are some challenges to create multi-language sites. First up is database. Um, if you're using some of the more complicated languages, I'm thinking Cyrillic languages or uh, Arabic or Chinese, the character correlation is different. So if you're just using a bog standard database that is fine for English, often you'll find the correlation is not supportive of these uh, multi uh, languages. And what happens is you add Chinese content and it just appears as a series of question marks. So when you're planning your multi-language site, you do need to get a database that supports the languages you're going to look at. The next challenge I think it was touched on briefly before is the left to right, right to left problem. Many languages are read from right to left. I imagine if you designed an English language site and the design looks perfect and you start adding right to left languages. Immediately your style sheet doesn't work or your spacing is gone and the look and design of your site is very, very poor. What WordPress does is it supports right to left style sheets. I've got a little document. I'll put this in the chat box, one moment. This might not be for everybody, but if you're interested in supporting right to left languages, WordPress allows you to have multiple style sheets. So what you do is you create a, a style or a design for your left to right language, and you also do the corresponding one for right to left. That document I've just pasted in will give you some details about that. Next challenge, performance. You've gone from holding one set of content to multiple sets of content. Added onto that, you've got this very complicated WPML uh, plugin that will do redirections and all sorts of other complicated things. So if you're on very cheap hosting, you may find that holding multiple languages of a site will ca cause you performance issues. There are ways around this. You can cache things. You can... Uh, beef up your hosting, get a, a more expensive, powerful hosting package. But please remember, multiple language, more database, more content, and a bigger performance hit. 
much like left to right and right to left, we have spacing issues once we start using different languages. Germans, the, the, the one that sticks in my mind, you might have a beautifully designed site in English, but as soon as you start adding translations in a language such as German, you find that the words are longer, it ruins your spacing, and you need to think about that and design around multiple languages, not just the one around one language. Give more spacing and uh, consider that when you get your designs done from your uh, graphic designer. Not every plugin and theme is compatible with WPML. I've shown you sites that are 100% compatible. The hint is to look for things that are marked as 100% localized. If not, and this is where I spend a lot of my time with my clients, you have to go in and recode themes, recode plugins, and make them work with WPML and make them localization ready. So don't want to put you off. These, these are some things that you should be in the back of your mind if you're going to go for a multi-language website. So a couple of things I've not covered because uh, we are running out of time, I'm very aware of that, We're even over the 60 minutes, and I said it wouldn't take that. Well, nearly over 60 minutes. Uh, you can translate media, or you can hold multiple copies of media, rather. So imagine you've got an image slider uh, with four or five images in, with text on them. You can hold different versions of that image for different languages. So it could display, I don't know, a price in euros for a French version of the site and the price in dollars for the US version. You can also translate your dashboard into your local language. So let me just show you that. I'm not sure if I've got the appropriate files installed. Fingers crossed. No, I haven't. So what you can get is a series of dashboard files. So all your menus in the back end of WordPress are also translated. And last but not least, you can also auto redirect based on browser settings. WPML can read the browser of the person that's visiting your site. It can realize that their preferred language is set to French, and it can automatically redirect them to that version of the language. There are lots of other things. Like I said, I don't want to go too deep. We've only got an hour for this webinar, and I want to leave some time for the Q&A. But if you've got any other specific areas you'd like to cover, ask me them in the Q&A session. So quick wrap up before Q&A. Multi -languages, language websites are a great, great way to extend your message and reach people in a way that they understand 100%. As I touched on at the start of the webinar, English is lingua franca for business, but reading content in a second language is difficult. The nuances of lost and people don't really understand it 100% of the time. If you can supply that content in their native language, you're going to get over your message to them much more easily. Just a reminder of the WPML URL, wpml.webpolyglot.com. And of course, if you need any help building a multi-language site, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm going to open the floor for some Questions and answers now. I've got a few in already. Stephen's asking, how do I manage international shipping? Um, that really depends on your e-commerce plugin that you use. If you were going to go with WooCommerce, what you can do is set multiple shipping costs. Um, if So let's just for sake of an example say we've got a US-based website. When you check out, you'll be asked to add your country and what you can do is you can set a series of shipping values based upon the target uh, country. So if it was internal to the United States it could be one value, if it was going to Canada a bit more, if it was going across the Atlantic to the UK you'd add more shipping costs. You could get those from uh, your shipping company, perhaps if you're going with uh, FedEx or something, they'll tell you how much those various packages are. And you can very easily set up multiple international shipping costs. Paul saying, what's the best email for WPML questions or quotations from your help? Let me just, what I'll do is I'll send you an 
email tomorrow everybody with the replay so if you just reply to that or you can go to wpdo.com and there's a contact page on there Suzanne says can you do multilingual sites with Headway yes when you're building WPML sites if you check WPML they have a list of themes that are compatible and Headway has been certified compatible so all of the internal um, messages that Headway puts out like um, read more um, try to think what they are uh, um, uh, all the comments type stuff that's available to add automatically for string translations does that make sense to explain that properly so imagine the comment page on a Headway theme those strings are ready to be translated in the back end once you install WPML. Are Woo themes generally multi-language friendly? Yes, they are. Um, obviously, WooCommerce, Woo themes, they've all been approved and um, tested and localized. Paul saying, really useful webinar. Thanks, Neil. No problem, Paul. Glad you enjoyed it. Dave saying, can you explain multi territories a bit more? You got a bit lost off on that. Yeah. Imagine you sell into four countries and they all use the same language. Let's use English again as the example. You're in the, the US, you're into uh, UK and Australia. What you could do is you could set up three versions of English and hold three versions of your content and then someone selects the Oz flag it'll display a different set of content based upon that. Hope that answers a question Dave. Looks like people are dropping off now saying it's really useful glad you all enjoyed it thanks for attending everyone. Any more questions? Catherine's saying, I notice you use widget logic and some code. Will that come up often? Not very often, Catherine. Um, <laughs> I'm being a bit uh, hesitant there. It really depends upon your theme. If your theme or your plugins aren't coded very well, you often have to go in and recode them and start using things like widget logic and that kind of thing. So it really does depend on your uh, on your setup. I would say eighty to ninety percent of plugins and themes are good, but it's that last ten percent where you re really need to go in and code things up. Hang on, I can't see that name of this person here. John saying, does it work with Event Espresso? Good question. Let me just double check. I've not used it myself, so let's just have a quick look at the features. So the key thing to look for is localization. doesn't actively say so unfortunately that would have to be a, uh, a test I think Captain saying if I choose a certified WPML theme will it be okay yes it will there are a list on the WPML website of everything that's been certified Again, John saying Event Espresso is one of the better event booking plugins. I've used it on just plain uh, 
single language sites and I know it is good and it is a quality plugin so I would imagine that if the way they've coded it, it would be localized let me just check through my list make sure I've not missed anything Are themes from I can't read that off the themes from theme forest WPML already again check on the particular theme and theme forest is usually very good it'll say whether it's it's localized or not Just take one at random. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, you typically I've picked one that's not. <laughs> it will say in in this little bit of tag whether or not it's localized or not. Paul saying theme for us is compatible according to WML, but I would really check with the theme. There are some that aren't. I think unless unless theme for us have um, added that as a list of things that have to be. Michael saying where do I find the list? Sorry. So if you go to WML polyglot dot com. Oh, come on. I'll dig that link out. There's a, a list of all the compatible themes on the WPML site. I'll dig that out for you. Johnson, uh, interesting use that HC for WPML is for different departments. Yeah, that's another great way to use it. Use it as a content management system rather than a, a language system, much like the territories. So if you selected sales, for example, it would show you all the sales related content. If you showed engineering, it would show the engineering content. So don't think of WPML just as a language thing. It can be a content thing as well. Paul's just said it's under documentation compatibility. There we go. Let me just share that link. Thanks, Paul. Has anyone got any more questions about multi-language sites? So who's off to build a multi-language site after this? <laughs> Yeah, me definitely says a few people. So the beauty of WPML is it takes away the need to have multiple pages and the complexity of managing multiple sites even. Um, it's all held under one system, so you have to update one version of... Um, 
WordPress, one version of the plugins, and all you need to worry about after that is multiple copies of the content. That's a very good question from Dave. What about SEO? Well, what you can do is there's multiple ways to set up uh, your URLs. You can, let me just show you the way I've got it set up. If you look at the URL bar, if I switch to French, all the French content will be appended with an FR. Uh, we can also have it, so we have a language, a query string on the end. Not so great for SEO, in my opinion. Or you can set it to have different domains. So you could have French dot web, not dot com, like that. Obviously, I've got that configured so that won't work. But if you holding it in essentially different directories, I'm not the, an expert at SEO, but that keeps the content separate and distinct, so you'll have multiple versions of your content going into uh, Google. I understand using WordPress SEO by Yoast, I have to double check this, I'm going out on a limb here making this claim, but you can host multiple sitemaps and you could submit different sitemaps for different languages. I've not done that personally, so don't quote me on that, but I think you can do that. Any more questions before we close out? Lynn saying, will we get the recording? Yes. Um, depending upon how long it takes to, um, what's the word, process itself, because this is quite a big video file, so it takes several hours to, to process and to make it available. So what I'll do is I'll get that done as soon as I come off the webinar. If I don't get it to you today, it'll definitely be with you first thing tomorrow morning. And of course, if you've got any questions that you think of after the event, just drop me an email. So I think I've talked myself hoarse. <laughs> Unless there's any more questions, I'll close the webinar down and thank you all for joining. I hope you've taken something useful away. Nope, no more questions. What I'll do is I'll mute myself and I'll hang around for another 15 or so minutes on the text chat box and I'll answer any questions that way. It's been Neil Matthews. Thanks again for coming. Bye for now.